Hello again, folks. What can we say about this weather? Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. If I were to ask you, had you ever heard of Francis Jane Crosby? I wonder how many of you would say yes. But if I were to ask you, do you know these hymns? Safe in the arms of Jesus, to God be the glory, blessed assurance. I think you would say yes. They were written by Frances Jane Crosby, who wrote more than 9,000 songs and hymns in her lifetime, some of which are amongst the most popular in every Christian denomination. And she wrote so many that on one occasion she was forced to use a pen name because otherwise every book in the hymnal would have been by uh, Frances uh, Crosby. And you know, the most remarkable thing about it was that she had done all this in spite of her blindness. A well-meaning preacher once remarked to her, I think it's a great pity that the Master did not give you sight when he showered so many gifts upon you. Annie Crosby responded at once, Do you know that if at birth I had been able to make one petition, it would have been that I was born blind. Because when I get to heaven, the first face that shall ever gladden my sight will be that of my Saviour. Born on the 24th of March 1820 in Putnam County, New York, Frances lived until just before her 95th birthday. She had a long life writing her last verses just weeks before she died. And this is the last thing she ever wrote. You will reach the river brink some sweet day by and by. She was well known as the queen of gospel songwriters and her hymns were attributed to the success of, of many in the evangelical uh, crusade in the 1800s and beyond. When Fanny was only six weeks old, she, she had a fever which affected her eyes. And unfortunately, the family doctor was away at that time. And they, they brought in another man who was not a certified doctor. He was pretending to be a certified doctor. And he treated her by prescribing hot mustard poultices to be applied to her eyes. Now, the illness eventually passed, but Fanny was blind. And it is possible, of course, that she was blind already and that it had not been noticed. She was, uh, she was only weeks old. But hot mustard poultices on a baby's eyes? I don't think so. Apparently, the doctor was revealed to be uh, a quack and he disappeared. Now, not long after this, sadly, uh, Fanny's father died and her mother was forced to find work as a maid to support the family, to support herself and, uh, and Francis. And Francis was mostly raised by her Christian grandmother. Her love of, of poetry began very early and her first verse written at the age of eight, just echoed her lifelong refusal to feel sorry for herself or, you know, to, to play the victim of her blindness. And this is what she wrote at eight. Oh, what a happy soul I am, although I cannot see. I am resolved that in this world contented that I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I'm blind. I cannot and I won't. How brave she was and, and how very humbling it is. We, we set so much store by our sight, don't we? How many times have we spoken of the beauty of creation all around us during this lockdown period? Stop, look and listen. Just listen to the words of some of her hymns. She was so confident. She had such a strong faith. Yes, that's humbling. While she enjoyed her poetry, she zealously memorized the Bible, 
memorising five chapters a week. I'd expect her grandmother would have been there beside her helping her because obviously she couldn't read it herself. And even as a child, she could uh, recite the Pentateuch, the Gospels, Proverbs, the Song of Solomon and many Psalms, chapter and verse. Uh, shortly before her 15th birthday, she was sent to the recently founded New York Institute for the Blind, which would be her home for 23 years, 12 years as a student and 11 years as a teacher. And it was there that she would meet her husband, Alexander Van Alstein. He was called Van by his friends. And he was also blind. And he enrolled at the same college as Fanny and taught there for a while too. And he was considered one of New York's best organists. And he wrote the music to many of her hymns. Um, uh, Crosby herself was a very talented musician but she only put music to a few, although she did play the piano and the harp and the guitar and other instruments. Very talented. More often musicians would come to her for lyrics for their music. Van and she were married on the 5th of March 1858 and although they were both working and could afford to live a very comfortable life, they had and this is a quote, other priorities and gave away anything that was not necessary to their daily survival. They organised concerts with half the proceeds given to aid the poor. Very humbling. But sadness did come to them. They had a little girl, a little daughter, Frances, who died only weeks old very soon after birth from typhoid fever and it's thought that this is what prompted uh, Fanny to write safe in the arms of Jesus. She never spoke publicly about being a mother except from mentioning it in a few interviews towards the end of her life. She said, now I am going to tell you of something that only my closest friends know. I became a mother and knew a mother's love. God gave us a tender babe, but the angels came down and took our infant up to God and to his throne. Strangely enough, for many years the couple lived apart, although they remained friends. And her only recorded admission of, of marital unhappiness was in 1903 when she commented on her late husband. He had his faults, and so have I mine. But notwithstanding these, we loved each other to the end. Her hymns are a great testimony to her faith. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and if you take any one of them, it tells you all you need to know to share the gospel. So just let's have a wee quick look at To God Be The Glory. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. Encapsulated in these few lines, we have the Bible story from creation to God be the glory to Calvary, who yielded his life. There is the gospel right there, a gospel worthy of all praise. And of course, the praise comes in the chorus. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Interesting that she's encouraging the sense of hearing here, not look at what he has done, but listen to what he has done, listen to his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. She takes no glory for herself. O perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, 
to every believer the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Here we have the great love of God and the grace of God demonstrated in the blood of Christ. And not just for the good. Francis says, so rejoice all of you. This is for all people who, who believe. Vilest defender who truly believes. So praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. And finally the joy for her sight restored, looking into her Saviour's face. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our rapture, when Jesus we see. Let us never take the gift of sight for granted. Really, we have such a lot to praise God for in these wonderful hymns. And as Francis would have said, to God be the glory. Let us pray. Father, we are humbled and awed by the prolific work of your servant, Francis Jane Crosby, and we're so grateful that these wonderful old hymns have lasted and uplifted hearts and souls throughout the ages. We bring you now our thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. So bye for now and I'll see you on Friday. And so get out there and enjoy the fresh air and that lovely weather. Bye-bye.